Released in 2020, designed by John S. Bailey, illustrated by Emmy Bailey and Adam Shafranskia, and published by Humble Bard Games. FOT is a print and play roll and write action adventure game where you take on the role of a lowly villager tasked with ridding the world of the evil warlord Bram. This game is a series of mazes with a different win condition and timer attached to them, and that is where a lot of the charm of this game lays. Is the difference in those mazes. In one maze, you're trying to catch an orb of ice by timing your movement with the doom dice. In another maze, you have to collect four different keys and pass through four different doors before the timer goes. You go from that to on another level, combating some of Bram's strongest minions. This game's playtime is gonna be very much dependent on your ability to decipher all the possible actions and moves you have between your dice and relics. Mapping out your route, adjusting the different dice combinations, deciding which relic to use or not use before each movement, and how, how far to push the timer are all things you're gonna consider on your turn each and every roll. My favorite thing about the game is definitely the relics. I absolutely love the little rule breaking abilities they give you and how they can make a movement feel very epic. If you like making the most out of die rolls and mapping out decisions based on decisions based on future decisions, then this is a game that you might like. But if you struggle with making a decision and forking off from that decision, all the other possible choices you might make, you might get lost in what is the meat of this game. I myself have never made it past level three, but today might be the day I finally get into Bram's chamber and seal the deal. Won't you join me now as I solo Fortress of Terror. Your small hamlet of Felwart is threatened by mysterious evil power emanating from the dark tower nearby. Legend says that an evil warlord once lived in the tower terrorizing the realm. There are whispers that this warlord, known as Bram, has somehow returned. The people of Felwart have chosen you to go to the tower and stop this threat. It is said that within the garden outside Bram's tower lies the key to stopping him. The Orb of Ice. If you can navigate the eerie crypt beyond the garden and find a way to enter Bram's Tower, you may be able to save your town. But those who enter the Fortress of Terror never return. All right, guys, here we have Fortress of Terror set up for solo play. We've got our game board. We're starting on chapter one, which is going to be Bram's Garden. We've got our trusty expo marker, which is going to be keeping track of our trail. We've chosen uh, the companion of Lark the Wizard. Um, he's going to allow us to change all the dice in our dice pool. I'm going to get a three use out of him, but every time I use him, he's going to cost me victory points at the end of the game. So I got to be really careful about how often I use him. We've got our Doom dice, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. We've got our luck dice and our movement dice. We're all set up here. We need four movement dice. Any will suffice. I just like them all to be color coded. And then a four sided dice for your luck die. That's gonna be your mitigation here in this game. So in this game, you see that a round has basically four parts to it. We're gonna roll our dice. We're then gonna activate our dice. Brown's gonna have some sort of power based on the chapter we're in. And the terror grows, which means we just continue on with our rounds. Okay, for example, in this first game, we're gonna have seven rounds to get everything we need to get done. Some general rules about it, I'm gonna really explain a lot to, at the end, but I'm gonna roll these dice, I'm gonna to have to use three of the four of them. The dice values, here's the kicker, the dice values shown on the dice, I have to move their whole amount. It's not I can move up to that much or um, I can use as, move as many of those I want, I have to use all of them. So that's the big tricky part. So we're gonna roll these dice and then I'm gonna take about seven minutes each turn to figure out what I'm gonna do with those dice. I'm being dramatic for dramatic purposes, but there is a lot of thinking and planning how to navigate this map because the dice numbers are true outside of our luck dice, which we're definitely gonna use at times to mitigate these dice rolls. So like I said, I'm gonna go over um, most of the rules as we play, like what are these, what are these, what are these? When we get in there, I will get into it. The last thing for setup I'm gonna do now is roll the Doom dice. We're gonna just roll this dice and it's gonna just be our starting number. So we're gonna start at nine, we're gonna add it right there. And now 
With everything here for us and ready, we are ready to begin Bram's Garden, Chapter 1. You exit the western edge of the forest and sprawled out between you and the dark mountains is the nightmarish fortress of terror. The hill you now stand on overlooks the ancient overgrown garden. Beyond the garden, a graveyard of stones and rubble is the only pathway to the foot of the looming tower. And unfortunately, your destination. The gates of the garden have been long since shut and sealed, whether by age or something else you do not know. However, you have spotted a large tree growing up near the garden. This giant burrow is stretching far and out over the garden and creaking in the foreboding wind that cuts across the plain. Climbing the tree should be easy and you could drop right down in the middle of the garden. Okay, so we are starting right here. These little footprints, oh, so cute. We're gonna be starting right there, okay? We dropped dead middle of the garden. So there, let me talk a little bit about this map as we see it. I'm gonna zoom in here for a second to give you guys a closer look. Okay, so our footprints are starting. All these little grays are wall barriers. I can't go through them. So those are gonna be really hard to navigate uh, around here with my points. We then see these yellow numbers. These are relics. Anytime I go through them, land on them, I'm gonna be able to draw from the relic deck and add uh, rule breaking things to my abilities. We then see these green ones. These are teleporters. Whenever I enter a teleporter, I must take one point of movement and go to the matching uh, teleporter um, of the same letter. And the last thing we really want to look at here is these blue numbers on the outside. The flavor text had talked about the orb of ice. That's going to be something I have to get before I can leave here. So winning Bram's Garden, I have to get the orb of ice and get out. Um, I, it's highly recommended that I collect as many relics as I can because there's a point system here. Um, for each chapter and at the end of the game my points are how I win and you do lose a lot of points So for every relic I collect I'm gonna get five points for every teleporter. I use I'm gonna get two points. However Lost relics in this in this chapter Bram's power which is part of number three in our round summary actions He's gonna see them the number in the doom nine. He's gonna cross that relic out. Where's nine? There it is shh, shh. That would be then at the end of this chapter be counted as a lost relic. I lose five points for each lost relic. Abandoned relics, those are relics that I didn't gain or weren't lost. Those are going to be negative three. And then every trap I sprung, which is a T, is going to be negative two points. So you can see how I'm going to need to collect relics and use teleporters to offset the losing of relics. Um, so the how do I get the orb dice? Well, this is at a nine now. I've got to cross over or touch the nine here, the nine down here, excuse me. Um, so whatever number the terror dice is, that's the number I've got to land on to get that orb. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything. Without further ado, let's get this ball rolling. Okay, here is our first roll. We got two ones, a five, a six, and my luck dice is a one as well, okay? So if I'm starting here, the orb's at nine, tens all the way up here. So maybe if I can start making my way up there, I can get that orb. Um, the other option would be try to go down here to get this 11. So we've got a five and a six, one, two, three, four, five. A five takes us right down to this 12, or one, two, three, four, five, takes me right up to that 11. The 11 is sooner in order of getting eliminated. So I'm a little more apt to move up here but then I have to wait. I'm probably not gonna get there in 10, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I could add one to a two. One, two, three. I can do five again. One, two, three, four, five. No, I'll overshoot it. So there's no way I'm getting to that 10 this turn, but I could get up there next turn. Let's see. If we move up that five, one, two, three, four, five. If we do one and one, we could teleport to C, which would be down here. I don't like that. We could go the other way to go D, and that would put us over to three, but that's not gonna help either. Hmm. A and B, A, B, no. Nope. That's a six and a five, not close to that orb. So maybe we just focus on 
coming down here, trying to get some of these relics, and then heading back up north, trying to time it with maybe this one or this two, and then get out, that'd be 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. So that'd be five, six, six turns. I've got seven turns to do it. So that's what we're gonna try to do is get that one and two. Um, the question is, do I first want to, yeah, I think I wanna go up to get that 11. So we're gonna use this five, we're gonna activate that five and go up one, two, three, four, five. I got a relic, so it means I'm gonna draw from the relic deck. Let's see what relic I got. Agility necklace. During a single movement, you may change direction any number of times. Okay, so this is now available to me to use, which is really fantastic. I could add one to the six and make it a seven, but I don't think moving seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we could go this way and get another. We could get another relic. I like that. The other idea was to go down here, one and one, to D and move there, but I like getting up, being able to, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one. Okay, so one of the rules here is any black line I make, this is the path I took, it's going to be crumbling. It's called a crumbling path, means I cannot go over it. It is now like kind of crumbled into that they say is a, a void. So I can't double back on things. There is a relic in here that I could get that allows me to do it, but that's, gonna like, that's definitely going to be something I take into account here. Because I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then move one to get another relic, but then I'd have to double back here, and I've just cut off a lot of path to be able to get out at really making myself have to come up that way. So I'm a little intimidated by that. So instead of doing that, I am going to go. So I'll go one, that's this dice I'm activating, and one, that's that dice I'm activating. And I'll teleport to here. It means my next my next movement will be from here. I'm hoping up here to get to this 10 to make sure it's not lost. Because I'm going to lose 5. I gained 5 points with this relic. But I'm about to lose the relic number 9. Which is here. Which is a neg negative 5 points. So that's a wash. So I rolled my dice. I've activated 3 dice. This 4th movement dice I don't use. on this luck dice I can choose to use or not use. That's up to me. So now we go to Bram's Power. Bram's Power in Chapter 1. He's going to cross out the relic of the number shown on the tarot dice. So he's going to cross this one out. I'm going to make a nice X there so we can clearly see. I'm going to lose five points for that. Now terror grows. So I'm going to tick off one of the boxes here, the first box. And I'm going to advance the doom token to 10. Okay. So now it's going to be my turn again. From this spot, I'm going to roll my four dice, my four movement dice, and my one luck dice. Okay, let's see what I can do. One, two, three, four. I could get to that 10, but I'd spring a trap. One, one, two, three. I kind of like that. I'm going to go up there. I'll take the negative two to get another relic. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. I get another relic. I get the luck ring. Reroll any number of dice in your dice pool or change one die in your dice pool to any number. All right, another really good relic there for some dice mitigation. So that was my four, and I'm gonna move one here. He's gonna cross out 10. I don't know, where's 10? Oh, I just covered 10, so we're good there. We're not gonna lose one there. And 10 orb is there. I'm definitely not going to get up to that. I suppose I could have gone through this other trap, though, instead of moving there. One, two, three, four, and use the A. So let's hold on a second on that one. I was trying to avoid that trap, but maybe I want to use that trap and get another teleporter, because that's a wash. Teleporters are two points. Traps are... Negative two points. I'm already at negative two. If I go to this one, I'll be at negative four, but I've used two sets of transporters and it will take me down here near this 12 and this 11. That's pretty good. So if I go up one, two, three, four, that would be this, put me to A, and then I want to do one to come down here to the 12. So we're going to do this five minus one, which is going to move us 
one, two, three, four, which transports us over here. And then I'm gonna use this one to come down to this 12. And hopefully I'll be able to get uh, this 11 first and come back for the 12 maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, well that's the end of our movement. So that means where it's Bram's powers, it's relic number 10 we're gonna lose this time, but I collected it already so nothing happens. So terror grows. We finished round two. We advanced the dice to number to number eleven, which means the eleven relic, which I already saved, is the thing that would be crossed out, but it won't because I got it. Okay, let's go ahead and roll our dice. Okay, so six three three one. One oh where am I? Oh yeah, I went down there. Uh one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use is my agility necklace here because I wanna try to get this 11 and 12 in one turn and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. One, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do it. So we're gonna do this. During a single movement, you may change direction any number of times. We're going to do this three, or the six with a three, which is going to give me nine movement. I'm hoping to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to get all the way to that 12 and that 11. I'm going to get two of them here. Don't really, I don't have a plan after that. Let's see, I have a one and a three, so I go one and one, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to do nine, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so first things first, I got this relic, relic number 12. Restoration gem. Make a lost relic or lore stone available again in chapter three, erase one block space in Brown's chapter. Okay, so I can make a lost relic available again in this turn. It's in this chapter. It seems like in other chapters I might be able to do other powers and we'll go over that as we get there. We now have the restoration gem as well. But we use the, the agility necklace, so we're gonna place this face down. We won't be able to use it again. Then I just landed on the orb dice, the orb, uh, what's it called? Orb of ice, number matching the number of the round, which means I've collected the Orb of Ice, which here on this score sheet, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that I got it. I've made one of the win conditions occur for chapter one. Now, it's all about scoring points. I'm sitting at five, 10, 15 points, um, but I've lost one relic, so that's negative five, which is 10 points. I've also sprung one, two traps, that's negative four points, so that's at, I'm at six points. I've used two teleporters, that's gonna be another four points. I'm at 10, but lost abandoned relics? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times three is 24, so that's a big negative. So now I'm gonna go around and try to get as many relics as I can. Uh, but that was just my first movement. I only got my three and ones. I think I'm gonna have to go one and one, and then hopefully move up and round out. So I'm gonna do one, and one. It was really about that big move to get those that relic and that orb of ice in one turn there. That's what this whole turn was about. Bram's power is number 11, but we saved number 11 already, so nothing happens there. And we go ahead and advance to number 12. And then we're gonna go ahead and roll our dice. Okay, let's see. We've got, we could go two and one. Reroll any number of dice in your dice pool or change one die to the pool of your number of your choice. So let's see, one, two, that'd be the three minus the one. One, one, two, three. I don't wanna move three. One, two, three, four, five, no. I don't want either of those. So maybe if I change this, cause I wanna teleport over to C, I think. So we're going to, um, so I'm going to first do three minus one is two. So I'm going to go one, two. Then I'm going to use this one to move over one here. 
which is going to give me another relic, relic number seven. That's the rogue cloak. During a single movement, ignore all traps move through. Mark the traps with an X to remember during the scoring. Okay, so I'm immune to, to traps on that movement. Well, do I just use that one, two, three and ignore that trap so I can come back around here? Or do I wait for the next turn? Oh, because it could go through two here and get two relics. Ooh, that'd be nice if I can get a straight line. So one, two, one, two, three. I think I'm just going to take that trap, one, two, three, and go up one, two, three. So I thought I was going to go over here to teleport to that C, but I see two, two, one, two, three, tasty options here. That's going to be a 15 point swing for me. Uh, 15 or 15 minus six is, um, oh boy, nine. Nine point swing, that'd be pretty good. All right, so those are my three movements. Um, to get another relic and trigger another trap. 12 relic. I did not save that one, I don't believe. Oh, no, I did. I did save that one. So, again, no lost relics there. That, I think, is the key here is really trying to plan a path based on that doom dice so you don't take those negative fives. But terror is going to grow. I feel like I missed a round here. We did round one, two, three, four. So, yeah, this... We missed around last turn. And now we're back down to one. So now it's going to get rid of that relic. And we're, run, we're three rounds away from having to get out of here. So I'm going to have to think about these three and then getting out. That's going to be the hope. Back up to uh, step one of the round, which is going to be roll the dice. All right. So I'm looking to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can I do it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to pair this five with this four to make nine. And I'm going to use my rogue cloak during a single movement. Ignore all traps. Move through. Mark those with an X. So I'm going to be able to move nine. One, two, three, four, five. Not marked. Six, seven, eight, nine. So I got two relics and avoided two traps on that move. That is what you call expert moving. So let's go ahead and draw our relics. We got speed gloves. You may use all movement dice this round. Oh, you get to do four, that's awesome. And our other relic is the magic boomerang. Collect one object within two orthogonal spaces. Ignore block spaces and barriers. Ooh, nice. So it kind of get a longer reach. So that was my first movement of nine. And now I want to move up here. One, two, three, four, five, and one. Let's do that. That'll be our three movement. And we'll get one more relic. One, two, three, four, five, and one. Which gives us another relic. And we got the frog boots. Move up to six spaces in a single direction for free. Can't combine that with the luck dice, though. But that's okay. All right, so we're looking really good with our relics. We've got our orb of ice, and our we got now two turns to be able to get out. So Bram's action is number one. We're just gonna lose that relic. That's gone. The next relic we're gonna lose is two. I wonder if I can get there and out in two turns. So before we do that, let's not count those eggs before they hatch. Let's go to advance our round and tick off another one. We've got two more turns to possibly get another relic and get on out. Let's see how it goes with this roll. All right, so first things first, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. That could work. And I can use my Lack the Wizard to try to get out if it's really tight. So let's do that, let's trigger one, I think one more trap is worth the relic because I get to take these relics with me for the next round. So I want to get as many of them as I can. So we're here. We need one, two, three. One, two, three. And then three up. One, two, three, which means we get another relic. And that is the... Image mirror, copy the power of any one used or unused relic already in possession. That you already possess, excuse me. Well, that makes me feel like I want to take 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that could be, that I can get out. Yeah, let's do it. So he doesn't, uh, doesn't cross anything else out. So we're gonna use our image mirror to reproduce our agility necklace. During a single move, you may change direction any number of times. Copy that power, because it's used or unused. So boom, we're gonna move five plus four is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're out. Normally, once you get any of these arrow, arrows up here and then one of these three, it's an automatic out, but we made it. Okay, so we finished round one. Once we escape, it's done, it's over with. So now let's score it. The first thing we're gonna score is our relics collected. Let's see how many of those we have. Five, two, I'm sorry. <laughs> we collected one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight relics. Eight times five, 40 points for that. Teleporters used. We used one, two teleporters. So that's gonna be another four points. So we scored 44 points on that first one. Let's see how many points we lost. Lost relics, we've lost two of them. That's 10 points. Abandoned relics, one, two. That's gonna be six points. And trap sprung. So now we gotta look really closely here and, and take a look at our actions, what we've done here. So anytime we see a T on our track, so let's just go backwards here. That's two, four, six, eight. So eight points we lost there. So that means uh, 18, 24. So we finished this one with a score of 20. First round score of 20. Not too bad. All right, we'll come back and reset here for chapter two, Bram's Crypt. You pass through the creaking gates just before they slam shut behind you with a rusty clang. Firm in your resolve, you step forward into the evening mist permeating the blasted landscape before you that once served as a courtyard surrounding the tower. The tower itself looms before you, and you wonder how you will gain entry into its forbidding walls. Suddenly, the ground underneath you gives way, and you tumble hopelessly into the darkness. Somehow you are unscathed, and as you gain your bearings, you see in the dim light that you are in an underground crypt. A strange diagram is scrawled on the floor beneath you, depicting what looks like four antique locking mechanisms and four pale green stones. Terror begins to grow within you moment by moment. Will you ever escape? Okay, everybody. Here we have chapter two, Brand's Crypt set up for solo play. So one of the first things we do is we make sure we just take our Doom Dice and we leave it at the same number we left off on in the previous chapter. Let's take a look. Um, along with that, we're gonna use a new uh, board, a new uh, map. So let's take a look at what we see here. We see these, these uh, lore stones. I'm gonna have to go around collecting these much like I was trying to have to collect uh, an orb stone, but here where I only had to do one of them, the orb of ice, here I've got to get one for each number range here. So I've got to get one of them that's one through three, one of them that's either four through six, seven through nine, ten through twelve. My job <clears throat> is to collect one of those, at least one of those in each number range, and then walk my path through that to unlock this form. Okay, once I've done that, once I've unlocked all four of those, the one, the, the minute I land on that fourth one, unlock that fourth one, trigger that fourth one, whatever you want to call it, the round ends, it's done and over with. Some similarities here, we still have walls that we have to deal with, we still have relics that we can collect, we have our starting off point, um, we have, uh, instead of teleportation like we had in this last one, these green spaces, we're now going to be able to use the orb of ice to jump from number to number. This is a free action, which means I'm gonna be able to now roll my orb of dice roll, along with my four movement and one luck. 
So I'm gonna have an extra dice to roll and I'll be able to use that if I want to, to orb to one of those places. Also on this map, you see our little doors here. Doors, these are locked doors. I can move through them, but what I'll have to do is I have to stop right before it with the correct amount of movement, discard a dice to unlock that door, and then I can move again. So it slows you down greatly, but you can get through those walls, which is very helpful. Um, game is going to lose if I don't get out of here before 7 Terror, or if you are trapped and can't make any single movements. So we're going to put that here with our Doom. Was that 2 we said? We've added our Orb of Ice. We also need to add in two new relics, the Morphine Rod and the Knock Stone. Those are going to get shuffled into our relic deck that, that's remaining. Much like in Bram's Garden, Bram's going to have a power here in Chapter 2. Instead of knocking off relics, he's going to be knocking off these lower stones. Um, so I'm going to have to time my getting of them based on uh, what numbers are available um, for being crossed off and where I'm by. So that's going to be extra planning there. If we're looking here at for endgame scoring as we go, lower stones are going to be worth 5 points and relics are 3. Lost lower stones are negative five points. Abandoned ones, the ones I left banned are negative three. And traps, as always, are negative two. Got a cool little scoring grid here just so I can mark the ones I have um, collected after I've passed through them. So we're definitely trying to get a lot of these lower stones um, and unlock those doors. So without further ado, let's get this game rolling. All right, we got some high numbers here right away. So I start here. I could orb right to this three by using that orb, but let's see if I need to. I could go one, two, three, four, five, unlock the door, one. No, that's not gonna work for me. We're at two, so I definitely wanna get down towards that four. One, two, three, four, five, cross it, but then I wouldn't be able to orb there ever again. I could orb here three, no, nope, that's not going to work either. I'm not close to it. I'm not liking this first roll. And remember, I can use my relics at any time. One, two, three, four, five. Mm, I'm thinking about my, my frog boots. Let me move six in any direct up to six in any direction. Uh, but I don't think that really helps much else either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm thinking about uh, the agility necklace combining a five with a two there. I don't really like any of this. It's a very difficult position to start in. I suppose I could go three. I could orb here. One, two, no, because I, I can't get around it. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. No, ooh, this is already tougher to move around here. The starting position I'm not a big fan of. I think I might... Mm, 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 mm. I think I am going to use my luck ring to reroll any number of dice in my dice pool. I think I'm gonna re-roll. I like the orb dice at three and I like two being my modifier. So let's go and just re-roll these movement dice. Okay, let's see here now. We can do three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that gives me number nine. Okay, let's do that. So I'm gonna Starting here, I'm going to orb to three for free. I'm going to move one, and then I'm going to move three. One, two, three, and then I'm going to move three. One, two, three. So I've collected an orb. Had to use my luck ring, though, right away to do it. Although I have my mirror image, so I'm going to be able to do something twice. So we've rolled our dice, we've activated our dice. Now it's Bram's power. Bram is gonna get rid of the lower stone that matches this one, which is two. So this is gone. And I forgot, I ran over which number? Number nine. 
So I need to mark that one here on my score sheet number nine. Now I could technically go through this one to unlock and maybe that's the way I wanna kinda of turn and go or do I wanna come here and collect the number four? Um, not sure, but that's Bram's power. Now we're gonna Terra Grow, we're gonna advance this die by one and we're gonna knock off the first chapter. And then we're gonna roll our dice again. Okay, so our orb dice is three. Can't go back there because it's now a crumbled path. So let's see, I could go one, two, three, four, five. That would be this one. That would give me number four. Or I could do one, two, one, two, three, four, and pass through it. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to go collect? Yeah, let's go collect this orb because he's going to be coming for it. So I think that's my first move. One, two, three, four, five. I could discard a dice to open that door, and then I could move seven. I don't need to move seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just have to pass through. We don't have to land on it. So I could do the f three and five is eight. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, no. It's a lot of traps. Although if I could use my rogue cloak here, I wouldn't take any of these traps. I could use my rogue cloak and my agility necklace. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be the five and the three. Mm, I'm not gonna be able to get up and around there. I don't think I'm gonna go this way. I'm definitely, I'm, I'm really, I'm really focused on getting this four and this eight somehow. I could use my lack the wizard and lose three points, but that would allow me to change some uh, dice around here. Change all of your dice to any face you wish. I could do that so I could move along here and I could play my rogue cloak. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, and a one. So we need a six, a four, and a one. We got the four, we got the six. So I'm gonna use it all just for one. And then I'll be able to double back this way, perhaps move up. I'll have four and eight, that's a double up, but again, Lower stones, I'm gonna get our points. I wanna get points. I could just try to go all the way up here to the 10, come back down and around. Hopefully we can use our orb dice too to, to jump around here. We're just unlucky with that first one. So yeah, let's do it. We're gonna use Lack the Wizard. So we're gonna tap him like this. He's now gonna be, well, complete destruction. He's now gonna be negative three points for me at the end of this game. So we said we were gonna make it a six, and we were gonna play a rogue cloak here during a single movement, ignore all traps, uh, move through. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll do the six and this three. And we'll move here. This one's not going to count. And this one's not going to count as I cross through it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, we needed to do ten. So we'll do one more. Four. Ten. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's I that's the lark lack the wizard. I changed it to a six and to a four. That's ten. I played my rogue cloak to get through those those uh traps without triggering them, and I pass through lower stone number four, so I get to mark that one off on my sheet, which I'm doing off screen. There you go. Now I'm gonna change this one to a one, and come up here, and I've collected lower stone number eight. I'll mark that one as well. And then I'm going to just discard any card to open this door. Okay, so now I got a straight shot up to 10. 
I can always double back there or I can orb around. We'll see what happens. So I've activated my three dice. We're going to do Bram's power. He's going to get rid of uh, lore stone number three. And the terror is going to advance to number four. Okay, so I've gotten two of the four. I need a 10 through 12 or a one through three. And 10 is up there. So my hope is to go straight up there to that 10 or possibly orb around where I see fit. Let's roll our dice and see what our options are. Okay. So we could orb to six. That's here. I kind of like that. And we can go one, two, three, one, two. Uh, no, that's not going to work for us. Oh, although I could use my six, one, two, three, one, and one. Do I go all the way in this corner and get this number six? He's going to be coming for it for sure. I'm about to lose some points. I don't think, did I get five already? I didn't. Where is five? Five's all the way up there. I'm not going to get that. Four, I got four already, so six. Yeah, let's go over here to the six maybe. So I orb here and I go one, two, three, one, one. And then I've got to orb out of there. That's the thing though, I'm putting myself way in the corner. But I've got a one, two, three, four, four to six, two thirds chance of getting a dice that can orb me out. So let's try it, let's be risky here. For free, I'm gonna jump from here to the six. Because my other option, I think, is go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 1. I mean, that's another realistic option, but I like this one more because it's, this will be, I mean, I'm getting a wash. I'm getting 5. I'm going to lose 5 for sure here. I'm preventing a future 5, and I know I'm going to be at least getting to it. So let's do it. So we're going to go 6, and then we're going to go this one down, 1, 2, 3, and then 1. And one. Don't know. This might be a bad choice, getting myself in the corner here. But uh, I can always lack my way out of it, perhaps. So I collected number six. Yep, six. I'll mark that one here. That's the end of my turn. So Bram is going to get rid of number four, which I've collected. He's going to advance that terror to five and round three. So we've got four rounds. We, we've gotten, we still need to get some other ones to get through. Oh, we don't have enough, I'm sorry. We don't have enough lower stones to get through all of the, uh, the locked areas yet, but we're getting closer. We're scoring some points. Let's see. Oh, so the, uh, there's our orb three. We can't get out. I suppose I could move up here, one, two, three, four, five, open the door, one, two, three. Yeah, let's do that at least. So we're gonna go here, five. We'll take that trap, it's fine. One, two, three, four, five. We'll discard, we wanna move one, two, three. So we'll discard this two to open the door. And then we'll move three. One, two, three, that gave us a 12. That's within a range we don't have just yet, so that's really great. And I've got one more. No, that was all of them. Or I could play my speed glove and you get play four, one, two, three. No, that's not gonna do it for me. So that's gonna be it for my turn there. Very simple, got out even though I didn't get the orb dice I wanted. Five, Brown's gonna destroy that lore stone. Then we're gonna move this to six and mark another one. Oh, we're running out of time. We gotta start getting through things. I still need a one through three. And those are safe. Bram's not gonna destroy them, so I've got some time. Um, and let's see, six. He'll destroy seven, but I've got eight and nine, so he's only gonna destroy one of them in this next. And where is seven? Seven is up there. Highly unlikely I'm gonna get the orb over there. But let's roll our dice and see what happens here. 
Okay, orb to five. That doesn't really do much for us. So the other option is to get out of here. One, two, three. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some high numbers. Maybe I'll use my agility necklace to move out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That could be a six. I get a relic. Open the door one and one. Uh, I kind of like that idea because I'm getting a relic. Relic collected would be uh, would be three points. That's kind of nice to make up for some of the traps I've hit. I think I've only hit one, perhaps. This one here. So that's an option. I could cut, use my agility necklace to come down here. You get this relic. If I orb to five, I go down one, two, three. Yeah, that's that's not gonna work for anything. And orb, I could orb to five, open a die for free. One, two, three, four, five. And then I could move. That gets me through there. I kind of like that. Or for five, or I could or for five and do one, two. No, I'm thinking if I can get to that ten up there, but I might go down to get this relic here. It could be a waste of time. I've only got three turns to get through there. Oh yeah, yeah. Will I get through all three and five? I don't think so. So let's orb to five, open it, and get through four through six. Do we have one there? Yes, we do have one through there. So we're gonna orb to five. Do we even need to do that? One, two, three. Yeah, because that's a, a wall there. So we orb here. And then we're going to discard a one to open that door. And then we're going to play one, two, three, four, five, six. No, five. We'll play five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've unlocked one of them. And I've got, I can do, I can do 10 or I could do two, one, two, or one, two. Which way do we want to go? Maybe go this way, one, two, and then we can try to, do I have a one through three? I don't have one through three yet, so I have to get one of those low numbers. And I think, is one my only option? Yeah. Ooh, whoa, 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 because I think two and three got crossed out. So I've got to come up here and get it. So which way do we go? I guess we'll go down two. One, two. And maybe we can jump all the way across or get our one. It's a pretty clear path that way. Okay, that was a six minus four, which gave us two to go down there. So that's everything for us. Bram is now going to have his power, which is gonna destroy a six. He can't, so he advances to the seven. And we cross out another round. And let's go ahead and roll our dice and see what happens. We are running short on time here, guys. Okay. So we didn't get the one we needed, so we gotta run over there. One, two, three, four, five. No, I don't like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. No, I don't have three. That, that's a three, so I didn't move over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I combine the six with the four, and then I've got one, no, one, two, and one. Ugh, but then uh, I'm not gonna do it. Ay, 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 I'm running out of time. <sighs> okay, so let's really work on getting over there this turn. We're gonna use our gloves and our frog boots. So our frog boots are gonna let us move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we'll be able to move one, two, three, four, five. No, that's not gonna do anything. Yes, I could do that five. And then I could move, that would be the four and one would give me five. So jump six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I could move, what did I say? Four plus one is five more. One, two, three, four, five. 
And then I could mirror or use my agility necklace to move six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I could use my, fro my speed gloves to use my other two, one, two. So I think that's the way I'm gonna do it. I gotta get over there this turn. I'm not gonna be able to get through all of them in one turn though. Ugh, I'm gonna lose here at chapter two, guys. Ay ay ay. Time's gonna get away from me. <sighs> yeah, I, don't, I think that's all I'm gonna be able to do here. All right, so we're gonna use our frog boots to jump up to six spots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm gonna use my four. It was a, oh, what was it? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it was a four and a one, I think, to go five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna use my agility necklace. During a single movement, I can change direction any number of times. I'm gonna do the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna discard this one to get up to this one and collect that lore stone. Sorry, I filled it in there. So I got one. But Terra's gonna grow. Number seven is now destroyed. And I've got one turn to get through three different locations. Let's go ahead and roll our dice and see what miracle can happen. Now we roll the one there, but that's not gonna help us. So maybe we need to go four. Oh, and I did use, did I use my speed gloves? No, I didn't use all four of them. Okay, so it's gonna take some major, I don't think I'm gonna be able, I can't even jump over that, so that's not gonna happen for me. But I could lark myself to four and move one, and then move one, two, three. It's all kind of pointless now, isn't it? So we'll use lack one more time. We'll change this to a four. And we'll portal to the four. We'll move one with this one. And then we'll move three. One, two, three with that one. Then we will move, we'll change this to a one, two, three. I don't know why, it doesn't really matter. One, two, three, and we discard this one by using our speed gloves to use all four to open that door. An exercise in futility there, as Bram's now gonna cross out a seven. He can't, there he, no, I, he can do a seven, can't he? I don't know, it's somewhere in here. Either I didn't, I did collect it? I don't know, I don't have it marked here on my thing and I don't wanna come here and empty all of them. Oh, it's already marked, so he must have forgotten to advance it to eight. So now he marks off the eight, which can't happen because I got it, but he marks this, and I have just lost the Fortress of Terror. Through two chapters, very difficult here. Ran out of time, thought I was making some really good ground, but, uh, but alas, I did not. Let's take a look. If I would have gotten through it, I would then go to Bram's Tower, which are three levels. You're gonna jump between these three levels. They introduce uh, keys and minions, monsters to kill. Uh, you can get victory points for that. Um, and then Brand's Chamber, I'm gonna be honest, I've actually never even been there yet. Um, but it looks like it would be very difficult. And all, a lot of your past decisions, I think, come back to get you. Yeah, Bram's Tower, you're gonna actually be facing off against Bram and any relics you've already used don't get to be used again. So things get really hard really fast. But that has been Fortress of Terror. Um, I really like um, the mapping out of your, your choices where to go. That's a really fun and interesting uh, choice every time. Lots of replayability there based on your Doom Dice's starting position, the roll of your dice and making the most of it each turn, and the relics you get in the order you get them. All those really add to the replayability here. Um, if you don't like staring at dice and trying to figure out what to do with them uh, or how to adjust them, um, then this game's not gonna be for you. But if you like that, each round, um, I gotta make the most of what I've rolled um, and make a, a, a course of action here and try to plan my steps and be one or two ahead, which is not something I'm very good at. 
Uh, but if you like that, then this game is definitely for you. This game's size and material list really makes you think that it's not going to be uh, quite a heavy experience, but when you're sitting there trying to think through your turn and in which direction to go and only seven turns to get everything done, you really do feel uh, pretty pretty heavy afterwards. But uh, but I appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and that's been Fortress of Terror. See you guys next time. That's another episode of Han Solo Board Gaming in the books. You're seeing two videos on your screen right now. One was put there by artificial intelligence, tracking your every move, and one was put there by me. Make sure you click on the one you prefer so we can see who knows you better. Until next time, thanks for watching.